guys, Creamy Hater here. I'm new to YouTube, but I'm going to be starting a series on reading the Wikipedia articles of um, serial killers. Um, so, let's get to it. Alias Abu al -Azam, born August 29th, 1976, is an Arab-Israeli convicted murderer and suspect of racially motivated serial killings and stabbings. He is suspected in a string of 18 stabbing attacks from May to August 2010, which resulted in five deaths. Most of the alleged attacks occurred in Genesee County, Michigan, particularly in and around Flint. Five stabbings occurred elsewhere, three in Leesburg, Virginia, one in Toledo, Ohio, and one in his native home of Ramla, Israel. One of his alleged victims was described as a small frame Oh, I'm sorry. All of his alleged victims were described as small frames men, most of them African Americans. During the investigation, Michigan media dubbed Abu Lazam the Flint serial slasher and the Flint serial stabber. He was six foot five inches and weighed two hundred and eighty pounds at the time of his booking. Abu Lazam was has been convicted in one of the murders that was a 49-year-old Arnold Minor, which occurred on August 2, 2010 in Flint. He is currently serving the sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for that crime. As a result, Genesee County prosecutors have announced Abu Lazam will not stand for trial with the other crimes in their jurisdiction, nor will the authorities in Toledo or Leesburg try him. On May 2, 2017, Abu Lazam confessed to a 2009 murder in Leesburg. Abu Lazam was born in Israel in a well to do Christian family as a child. He moved to the United States with his family after his mother remarried. He acquired a green card but never gained U.S. citizenship. According to the State Department, Abu Lazam changed his last name to Abu Lazam. March 1995. Until 2008, Abu Al-Azam worked at Piedmont Behavioral Health Center, LLC, an adolescent psych psychiatric facility in Leesburg, Virginia, now called North Spring Behavioral Health Care, as a mental health technician. After moving to Michigan, he worked as a clerk at King Water Market in Beecher from July 5th to August 1st, 2010. Most customers knew him as Eli. He was cited for giving alcohol to a minor July 29th. The same day, 59-year-old man was stabbed in Flint. Abu Al-Azam's legal address is in Br Brandonton, Florida, according to the warrant. He previously lived in Grand Blanc. According to state records, Abu Al-Azam most recently lived in a house belonging to his uncle, on the Maryland Avenue on Flint Seaside. side. Abu Lazam married Jessica Hearth, also known as Jessica Nimmons, and Jessica Abu Lazam. On July 30th, 2004, he reportedly subjected her to emotional abuse. After they divorced in 2007, Abu Lazam married again. Jessica and her parents later expressed shock after he was accused of the murders and stabbings crimes. Police and prosecutors claimed that between May and, and August 2010, Abu Lazam would drive around late at night, approach small frame men who were walking alone, ask for directions or for help fixing his vehicles and a green colored Chevrolet trailblazer, and then stab them, usually in the chest or stomach. Abu Lazam's alleged victims have mostly been black, and police in Leesburg suspect that the attacks may have been most racially motivated, since the population there is mostly white. Genesee County prosecutors, however, have declined to speculate on his motive, while noting that the population of Flint is mostly black. Abu Lazam is also suspected of having stabbed a friend in the face with a screwdriver while on a visit to his family in Ramla in early 2010. Police did not pursue the case because the friend refused to press charges.
Chinese bird police said to Abu Azam is also a suspect in an unsolved homicide in March 2009 investigation in Genesee County on August 4th, 2010. It was announced that a series of stabbings dating back to May 2010 were the workforce of one man in a multi-jurisdictional task force was set up to investigate. The next week on August 9th, 2010, police in Leesburg contact connected three hammer attacks against black men there via their victim's description of the suspect video surveillance footage of the attacks that matches his description of vehicle and similar mode of operation. The next day, Toledo police claimed that a stabbing of a black man there also matched the suspect. Arrest. First arrest. Abu Azam was arrested August 5th, July 2010 in Arlington, Virginia during a traffic stop. He was taken into custody because he had a warrant out for his arrest for a simple assault and then later released on a personal bond. Second arrest and extradition. Abu Azam was arrested by U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers on August 11, 2010 at 10 p.m. Eastern Time in Artsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport while preparing to board a Delta Airlines flight bound for Tel Aviv. On August 13, 2010, he waived his right to flight extradition to Michigan. Abu Azam's family hired Lansing-based attorneys Brian Morley and Edouard Zanay. He was flown to Mint Flint on August 26, 2010 and lodged in the Genesee County Jail. Abu Azam was held in solitary confinement, likely for his safety and because he is suspected of extremely violent crimes against black men and the city's population is 56% black. At his arraignment, he was ordered he was ordered and held without bond by the judge even after the prosecutor asked for $10 million bail. Arnold Minor murder, tr murder trial During the evidentiary hearing for the Arnold Minor murder case, the judge ruled that evidence of the other Genesee County attacks could be used on that trial. The trial began on May 8, 2012. The prosecution's key piece of evidence was a drop of Minor's blood on a pair of pants found in Abu Zam's luggage. On May 15, the prosecution re rested after calling 50 witnesses including other victims and their relatives, as well as several forensic experts, in addition to Abu Azam's uncle, who assisted the police in his capture. Two days after May 17th, Abu Azam's attorneys presented an insanity defense. The sole expert witness was a psychiatrist hired by his attorneys, who diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia and said Abu Azam told him he committed the crimes because of evil spirits. The doctor also said Abu Azam told him he attempted suicide in 1997 and was diagnosed as a psychotic by an Israeli psychologist in 2009. The prosecution responded by attacking the psychiatrist's credibility, noting that his field of expertise was addiction medicine. The next day, the prosecution refuted the psychiatrist's diagnosis with two of their own mental health experts. Two psychologists who testified on behalf of the prosecution agreed that although Abu Azam has an unspecified personality disorder, he lacked and that lacked empathy. His attacks were too planned out and organized for him to be considered legally insane. On May 22, 2012, after only an hour of deliberation, the jury found Abu Azam guilty of Miner's murder. On June 25, 2012, Abu Azam was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Dismissed charges. On August 26, 2010, the, Gen the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office charged him with one count of assault with the intent to commit murder for an attack on July 27, 2010. On September 20, 2010, he was charged with four additional counts of assault to, murder, to commit murder. The 
victims of those crimes are Bill Fisher, who was attacked on June 26, 2010, Richard Booker, who was attacked on July 19, 2010, in Genesee Township, Michigan, Etwan Wilson, who was attacked August 1, 2010, near Pearson Road in Northern Flint, and Davon Rawls of Flint. On, o- on October 8, 2010, an Ohio grand jury indicted Abdul Azam and charged him with felonious assault and the stabbing of church janitor Tony Leno in Toledo, Ohio. On October 21, 2010, he was charged with murder of stabbing the deaths of Frank Kelly Brew and Darwin Marshall in front of Flint, Michigan. On November 4, 2010, he was charged with two counts of resisting and obstructing a police officer causing injury and three counts of resisting and obstructing a police officer's officer after he attempted to punch the deputy and had to be tasered with the help of four other officers on October 27, 2010. On November 12, 2010, he was charged with malicious destruction of property for smashing out the windows of of a car belonging to Trey Augsburger, boyfriend of witness Lucinda Mon. On November 23, 2010, he was charged with assault with the attempt to murder and the stabbing of Ant- Antoine Jackson on July 12, 2010, in Burton, Michigan. Appeals Abu El Azam hired a new attorney, Christopher M. Smith who filed an appeal based on the original trial's judge's rejection of a motive for change of venue due to the extensive media coverage of the case, which they claimed wrongly called him a serial killer, and refuted the judge's decision to allow evidence of the other attacks or testimony of his other alleged victims. On June 10, 2014, the Michigan Court of Appeals upheld Abu El Azam's conviction. Smith then appealed the decision to the Michigan Supreme Court, which declined to hear it on November 25, 2014. Deportation lawsuit. On August 1, 2014, Abu El Azam filed a case in the federal court against the Immigration and Naturalization Service and the United States Attorney General asking to be deported to Israel to face charges of an attempted murder that happened in Latron on October 1, 2009. Michigan authorities believe the lawsuit to be frivolous and expected it to be dismissed. Nothing that is legally possible because of Abu, Abu El Azam's life without parole status, since convicts cannot be rep- deported until their full sentence is served. In popular culture, the Abu El Azam case was profiled on July 8, 2013 episode of Investigation Discovery show Blood, Lies, and Alibis titled Serial Slasher. It, fe- it featured reenactment of some of his attacks, the investigation, and his arrest, actual footage of some of his attacks and his arrest and trial, as well as a testimony by, the, by Gen- Genesee County law enforcement officials local media, survival victims, and Arnold Mi- Arnold Miner's relatives. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you guys soon.